Ahoy hoy! Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to review Starbucks Daily Brew. Um, I just noticed this in Sweden. I don't know if it's out in the States yet. Uh, but this says coffee with milk vanilla flavor. The other one I saw didn't have any vanilla in it. It was like this minus the vanilla. Um, and it has less sugar. And it's made with 100% Arabica coffee, milk, hints of vanilla, and there's less sugar in it. And if this dumb thing doesn't um, blur, you can see the nutrition information. But it would be hard to see anyway because it occurs. So I'll just read it. Um... Per every 100 milliliter, and this is actually 250 milliliters, um, there is 45 calories, a gram of fat, 0.6 grams of saturated fat, uh, 6.2 grams of carbohydrates, 5.8 grams of added sugar, uh, 2.9 grams of protein, and 0 0.09 grams of salt. And you need to shake this gently and enjoy it cold. So we're going to do that. Shaky, shaky. Now, if you remember what I said in the last video, that I don't typically try products with milk, that's only with milk on its own. I do, I can try stuff if there's a little milk mixed in and I don't taste it. Because it's more than me being lactose intolerant. I do have an aversion to it, too. Okay, so let's open it. Oh, that got everywhere. Damn. Okay, I'm going to need to clean this up. So I'll be back. I am back after cleaning it. Um, oh, yeah. I, I misread the directions. It said shake gently. So, uh, don't try to shake it like the way I did because otherwise that might happen to you too. So, that was an oopsie on my part. So, let's... Ooh, okay. This is what it looks like. Ugh, it smells good. You know what it reminds me of? Almost like the Frappuccino mix. Nearly. I mean, I don't know what, ironically enough, I don't know what coffee we used in the Frappuccino mix. And I used to work at Starbucks years ago before I moved to Sweden. So, I have no idea if uh, we used Arabic coffee, coffee for the Frappuccino mix as well. But it sounds, it smells almost the same. So... That's kind of like what it reminds me of. Now, the thing is, we don't have vanilla typically in our frappuccino mix, so. I'm saying it R as if I'm still there. I haven't been in Starbucks. I haven't worked at Starbucks since 2006, so. And just to put it out there, Starbucks is not sponsoring this video. If they were, they'd probably going, for me, shaking this too hard after I said shake gently. Oh, well. So, this is what it looks like. It does smell great. I'm not smelling too much of vanilla, though. But, like I said, to me, this smells like a Frappuccino mix, almost. Okay, taste test. Now, this could be because I just brushed my teeth, but there's a very bitter aftertaste. Hmm. I'm not getting any notes of vanilla in the taste either. I'm not getting notes of vanilla in the scent. They do, they did say hints of vanilla flavor, but there's no hints. There's nothing there. I'm sure if I tried the other version of that without the vanilla, it would still taste the same. I mean, it 
again, the thing that I could have done wrong was I had, I just brushed my teeth before I did this, so the mint in my toothpaste might, might be canceling out certain things. But you would think it would punch through. It doesn't taste bad. I mean, I mean, if you have a sweet tooth like me, you know, this may not be your thing because I do have a sweet tooth. Um, like I like, I like Frappuccinos a lot. I mean, the coffee part, I mean, here's the thing, even though I don't taste vanilla and it's not very sugary, I, it's very smooth to drink. Um... The coffee flavor isn't extremely overwhelming. The thing I, I don't like, there's a slight bitterness as an aftertaste, and I don't like that. But other than that, it doesn't taste bad, really. Now, if you're someone who loves coffee to be very, very strong, I don't think this would be for you. Um, like, I know in Sweden, they want their coffee to be strong almost to... An espresso level, in my opinion. Um, I mean, that could be another thing, too. But then again, I mean, I never try to... I Even though I've, ad, I've adapted to how strong the coffee is here in Sweden, I mean, I don't find this weak at all. Because, you know, I'm a, I'm a sweet tooth person, so I'm more looking for how sweet it is and all this other stuff. But despite that, as I said, I mean, it's not bad to drink. It feels really nice in the mouth. It feels nice when it goes down. Very smooth. Coffee's not overwhelming. So if you don't want your coffee to be very, very strong, I mean, this is this is definitely for you. Um, is this that bitter aftertaste I don't like so much? But then again, like I said, I brushed my teeth before I did this, so. Yeah. I wonder... It would taste different in a can. I mean, I could try. See? Ew, I don't... I don't like drinking it out of the can, actually. Which is very unusual for me. Because, you know, I have no trouble drinking, like, soda out of a can. I mean, this is different. This is... I don't like the way it tastes out of the can, if that makes sense. It tastes more metallic. That or my taste buds have gotten awfully sensitive since I moved here. And, and that's a thing, too, that you need to consider. Um, it, things do taste differently between the U.S. and Europe. Um, let me see if there's any preservatives or stuff in here. Now, first, where do they manufacture this at? Okay, so... This is a Starbucks product, but it was um, mostly manufactured through Arlo Foods and Denmark. So, let me see what is in here. And luckily I can read Swedish ingredients fairly well. Milk uh, with 1.2... Uh, what? Yeah, I said that right initially. 1.27% grams of uh, fat. Starbucks Arabica ca Cafe or coffee. Um, sucker, uh, sucker, which is basically sugar. And um, that's 2%. Uh, calcium carbonate. Natural aromas. And that's basically it. Yeah. Hmm. My guess that's making this taste a little. But if it was manufactured in Denmark, then it wouldn't have any preservatives or anything in it. Now, I mean, the thing is, I never really felt that way about drinks in the U.S. As there's a thing. Um, I didn't notice it right off the bat. And I didn't notice it right off the bat between me visiting Sweden and visiting the United States. I would say it took me at least two years living in Sweden to notice that foods tasted differently. Um, in the U.S. than I thought initially. Now, the funny thing is, when you go from the U.S. to Sweden or anywhere in Europe, um, 
you the foods do taste differently because there's no preservatives in the food here in Europe, um, especially in Sweden. Because I don't know if they do everything like they do in Sweden, but in Sweden, at least, they don't use any preservatives in their food. So it tastes weird when you first eat it. But then the funny thing is, if you do move to a, a country like Sweden and Europe, um, if you live here for like at least a year or two, I would say two years rather than just a year. And you, and because it gives you more, you start adapting more to, to how things taste here. Then you start to notice how food in the States starts to taste weird to you that you didn't notice initially because you were raised with that food. And, excuse me, I have allergies going on. Birch pollen is very high here today. So not only do I have allergies, but it's affecting my asthma too. So hence why I sound weird today. Um, and, you know, because, you know, they do take, they do put preservatives more in their food in the U.S. than they do in Sweden, at least... I want to add at least how it was at least, at least in the early 2000s. Now, I noticed the last two times I went back to the States, I don't taste that chemically taste like I used to in most of the food. The only times I really taste it is mostly in candy and processed foods, but like, I don't, though I don't really eat much processed foods anymore, like frozen meals, I don't eat much of that anymore. Even here, I don't eat much of that. Um... So, I, I think in the States, they're, they've been cutting down on putting preservatives a lot in the food. Because I even taste the difference now than it, than it was in the early 2000s or mid-2000s. And I thought this was the case here where there was something extra added to it that would make it taste weird. But it wouldn't make sense because it was made in Denmark. And I think Denmark has the same thing like it is in Sweden where they don't add preservatives to their stuff. I don't think, definitely not to drinks. Yeah. Oh, well, sorry about the little short-term rambling, but I, I just want to put that out there, that especially if you're immigrating to a country in Europe or you're doing the or you're doing the opposite where you're immigrating to the United States, you know, there's going to be a change in taste that you're not used to um, that can make you question how it really tastes. Now, here's, a, here's an example. Um... In soda, for example, like diet, uh, not diet, because we don't have diet Pepsi here in Sweden, ironically enough. We have Pepsi Max. Um, I can drink Pepsi Max here in Sweden with no problems. In, in the U.S., though, I can't drink it. But I can drink diet Pepsi. But then again, we don't have diet Pepsi here in Sweden for some strange reason. We got diet Coke, but we don't have diet Pepsi. So... Yeah, that's right. And I've noticed one thing, too, but, like, the Coke Light or Diet Coke here is beginning to get less and less sold in places, I notice. Like, you can't find, let's say, a bottle this size, and, um, no, Pepsi Max isn't sponsoring this either, but you can't find a bottle this size a lot these days with Diet Coke or a Coke Light. So... I'm wondering they're trying to cut down on drinks that have sweetener. They just have trouble finding. So I know there was a shorter done artificial sweeteners or something through that, through Coke Light. But I think that started even before the pandemic happened, you know. But having said that, the only thing you learn about me is that I ramble a lot. I'm rambles McRambles. But yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering. I was just musing if, this tasted off because uh, it was it's a Starbucks product, but it's produced in Denmark. So, yeah, I, I think I think the aftertaste is more related to the fact that I brushed my teeth before I did this video, and the mint that you find in toothpaste, as well as other ingredients, might be clashing with this. So, you may not want to brush your teeth before you drink this, but um, I don't know. <laughs> it does taste good, but it's like. I don't know if I would get it again because, like, it's not sweet enough for me. But, like I said, smooth. It, um, it's nice to go down the throat. It smells good. There's just no vanilla, even a hint of vanilla. And the coffee's not overpowering or whatnot. And I would not drink this out of the can because metallic taste tastes a lot more stronger. But, yeah. So... Ah. 
So, if you like this video, smash like the like button. If you subscribe, I'll be absolutely delighted, and I'll see you all later. Toodles!